Hello and thanks for joining us for THV 11 News at Noon. I'm Journey Taylor here with meteorologist Scott Covert. We got a lot of people outside for the 4th of July relaxing and just enjoying but they should also keep their eyes on the skies. Yeah, right? it's definitely one of those days we got to stay weather aware. Mm -hmm. Now it's actually been pretty comfortable outside thus far. We've had more cloud cover hanging around, but now those clouds are starting to produce some thunderstorms. Now I'll tell you, there's nothing severe, but this thunderstorm that's developing just to the west and southwest of Sheridan now has some lightning, therefore making it a thunderstorm. So if you're out and about, uh, maybe you're on the water, you want to be really mindful of these things, even if you're not under a severe thunderstorm warning. Of course, that lightning can be dangerous if you're outside. Here's a broader picture of our satellite and radar. We find a few of those showers and storms beginning to develop. We're also tracking an area of thunderstorms that's really dying out as it pushes out of southwestern Oklahoma. With that said, if you're anywhere between, let's say, Polk and Sevier County, you might want to be mindful of that here this afternoon. And we do expect some additional development. Right now, we're at 84 degrees in Little Rock, 86 in Pine Bluff, 87 Monticello, where we've got a bit more of that cloud cover, some of that rain cooled air, uh, temperature are still in the 70s. Really not bad at all for the 4th of July. You'll find that chance of rain picks up this afternoon, but this is a scattered chance. Not everyone sees the rain. No guarantee you see it, but if you do, it'll probably cool you down and you may very well encounter some lightning and some thunder. Today's forecast still takes us into those low 90s. Heat index values uh, should break into those low 100s. Overall, the chance of rain about 40%. Now, in terms of what we're tracking ahead, more scattered storms in the forecast. It stays hot and humid with that potential for more storms continuing into the weekend. That seven day forecast is coming up in about 15 minutes. All right, Scott, thank you. Well, community in Philadelphia is grieving this 4th of July holiday after a shooter killed five people and injured two children Monday night. Police say the gunman was taken into custody with Keisha Bailey reports from Philadelphia. A person like that walking down a city street with an AR-15 and shooting randomly at people is a disgraceful situation in the United States of America. On the streets of Southwest Philadelphia Monday night, police say a 40-year-old man opened fire, hitting at least seven people. Multiple shots fired. When police arrived at the scene, they could hear the gunshots ringing out. All units, she was caught, she was got long gun. Officers tracked down the alleged gunman and cornered him in an alley. He was taken into custody. I was wearing a bulletproof vest with special magazines in there as well. Police say he was wearing a bulletproof vest with multiple rounds of ammunition in it, armed with an AR-style rifle and handgun. Officers arrested another person, but their connection to the alleged shooter is unclear. As victims were being shot, we have another person that we believe acquired a gun and returned fire in the direction of the shooter that we have in custody. The ages of the four victims killed range from 20 to 59. Police believe a fifth victim who was discovered dead in his home just after midnight is related to the shooting. Two children were injured, aged two and 13 years old. They were taken to a hospital. We're canvassing the area to get as much as we can to identify witnesses and do everything that we can to figure out the why behind this happening. Police have not identified any of the victims or released a possible motive. Now, as of Sunday, according to city records, there have been 212 homicides in Philadelphia. That's a 19% decrease from the same period as last year. In Philadelphia, Wakisha Bailey, CBS News. Well, gun violence also turned deadly last night in Fort Worth, Texas. Police say three people were killed and eight others wounded in a shooting that took place hours after a local festival. Police have not announced any arrests in connection with that attack, but according to a database run by Northeastern University in partnership with the Associated Press and USA Today, the shooting in Texas marks the country's 30th mass killing this year. That's the highest number on record up to this point. And today also marks one year since a gunman opened fire on an Independence Day parade in Highland Park, Illinois. He killed seven people, including a mother and father who shielded their toddler. Dozens more were injured, ranging in age from eight to 88. The suspect now faces 21 counts of first degree murder and is expected to see a courtroom by the end of the year. Since that shooting, state lawmakers have passed sweeping gun reform measures, including a statewide ban on assault weapons and high capacity ammunition magazines. This 4th of July, travelers are bracing for more possible flight disruptions with severe weather continuing to roll through parts of the country. Already more than 400 flights have been delayed or canceled in the U.S. Now, according to Flight Aware, already more than four, 300 flights have been delayed or canceled also today, with more record-breaking travel volume expected. Naomi Ruckham has more from New York. 
Frustrated travelers are still reeling from flight delays and cancellations this 4th of July. I'm really like overwhelmed. This is too much. I just want to get to Los Angeles. Severe weather and staffing shortages caused thousands of flight cancellations and delays over the past 10 days, upending travel plans for millions. Today, more storms are expected to move through the Northeast and the Plains, which could cause even more disruptions. I'm hoping that I traveled the right time here, and I'm hoping that going back is the right time as well. United Airlines says it has dished out 30,000 flyer miles to customers whose flights were canceled or delayed last week. It comes as AAA predicts more than 4 million Americans will take to the skies this July 4th holiday. Though the bulk of travelers, more than 43 million, will hit the highways. Slow down and allow extra time to get to wherever you're going to. One added perk at the pump this Independence Day, AAA says drivers will pay over a dollar less for a gallon of gas in many parts of the country compared to this time last year. Naomi Ruckham, CBS News. Developing right now, thousands of cooks, room attendants, dishwashers, and servers for various hotels in Southern California are going on strike in the middle of the busy July 4th weekend. At least 15,000 workers from more than 60 hotels in Los Angeles and Orange counties hit the picket lines on Sunday. Members of the union Unite Here say they are seeking a raise. We decided to, to go in a strike because uh, downtown is very expensive, you know, rent and uh, gas, food, everything is expensive. They want a pension plan that will allow them to retire with dignity. Um, they're asking for a fair workload. They want one person, one job. Now, a spokesperson for some of the bargaining group representing at least 44 hotels said that the work stoppage was expected and that hotel management is fully prepared to continue to operate as normal. Happening today, lots and lots of fireworks. One of the most spectacular 4th of July celebrations is the 39th annual Pops on the River in Little Rock. Tonight, the sky above the Arkansas River will be lit up in an array of colors and sounds. Now, leading up to the show, they'll have live music, food and drinks. Gates open at 5 and fireworks will start at 915. Now, tickets for reserve seating are $15 a piece, or you can just bring a blanket and watch for free. Now, on our website, that is THV11.com, you can find a link for Pops on the River, as well as all of these other events featuring fireworks. In North Little Rock, Dickey Stevens Park will have a free show with the gates opening at 7. Camden has its Star Spangled Spectacular with live music in their fireworks show starting at dark. And that's at the Camden Airport with gates opening at 6. Now in Jacksonville, gates will open at 5 at Jacksonville Shooting Sports Complex for Big Bang on the Range. Also tonight, as the skies thunder with bright lights and big sounds, many will experience joy, but not everyone. The 4th of July can sometimes be hard for people and pets. That's why tonight the doors of Mall Mail Animal Services on Cogdale Drive will be open from 5 p.m. to 10 p.m. to allow people to come and come for pets at the shelter who have a hard time coping with fireworks during the 4th of July holiday. Now, the shelter also welcomes any person that may not like the loud noise from the fireworks. And tonight, you can expect open play with dogs and cats, in addition to music, games, and opportunity to also adopt. Now, along with keeping your pets safe and sound, we want to make sure that you're also safe and sound today as well. Swim beaches in several places around the state are closed because of high E. coli levels. In Faulkner County, Beaver, Beaver Fork is closed. Lake Washita State Park in Spring Beach at Lake Washita are both closed today. In Benson County, Dam Site Island is closed. Now, if you're planning to go to any of these beaches or other others today, you want to check for any warning signs posted to make sure it's safe. Today is Independence Day, a day when we look back on our country's history. In less than two minutes, we're walking you through the National Museum of American History in Washington for a deep dive into the history of the American flag 